Welcome to the HB channel. My name is Hans Beekhuizen and this time we look at a cheap audio streamer based on the new Raspberry Pi 2B and free Rune Audio software. I have been following credit card size computers for music playback for over two years now and reviewed the Raspberry Pi Type B combined with Raspify software in 2013. It was ok but not brilliant and certainly not reliable. The one core Raspberry Pi could just handle audio meaning that it only needed a small distraction to hiccup. Still, enthusiastic reviews keep appearing on the web. The problem with most of those reviews is that it's hard to judge whether the reviewer is a seasoned audiophile listener or just a computer guy that is already happy when the music coming out of his PC speakers is more or less recognizable. My job, should I accept it, is to establish whether the new Raspberry Pi and Rune Audio is able to play music at an audiophile level or not. And initially it appeared to be a real mission impossible. The makers of Volumio and Rune Audio promise a trouble free installation and operation and in many cases it might be. But as soon as you do have problems, almost all forums try to make you a command line cowboy. No graphical interface but a terminal where you have to type critical instructions. I used to be fluent in command line instructions on Commodore 64, CPM and MS-DOS but not on Linux. My, mo my most used computers are Macs which are Unix computers in disguise but I never felt the need to learn Unix command line instructions since Apple has built a graphical user interface that does it all. But back to the Raspberry Pi. A lot has changed in two years. The Raspify team split up in Volumio and Rune Audio and both started to support more credit card sized computers like the BeagleBone Black, Kubox, Udo, Kubi Truck and of course the Raspberry Pi. Recently the Raspberry Pi organization introduced a quad core Raspberry Pi running at 900 MHz instead of 600. The RAM was also increased from 256 or 512 megabytes to 1 gigabyte and the most amazing thing is the price remained the same. 35 euros for the board, quite a bit lower than the other credit card sized computers. Throw in an extra 30 euros and you have it including a micro SD card, a plastic housing and a 5 volt 2 amp power supply. I have started off with Volumio and Rune Audio and installed it on two credit card sized computers, the new Raspberry Pi 2 Model B and the 99 euros costing Udo Quads. But the releases for the Udo lag behind drastically so I decided to focus on the Raspberry Pi for now. I also decided to stay with Rune Audio using version 0.3 beta since it simply developed further offering better settings and cataloging. Installing Rune Audio on a micro SD card using a Windows computer is a matter of following the instructions given on runeaudio.com. Mac users might better download Apple Pie Baker and follow the Windows instructions and instead of Win32 Disk Writer you simply use Apple Pie Baker. No special skills are needed. As long as you're not digiphobe, you'll manage. Then you insert the SD card in the Raspberry Pi, connect the network cable, the A converter and the power adapter and you're set to go. If you want to use a USB drive, connect that too. When all is connected, you can hide the Raspberry Pi out of sight since all control is done from another computer, a tablet or a smartphone. Just open the internet browser and type runeaudio.local in the address bar. When all went well, the user interface pops up. The first thing you have to do is to set the playback options. From the menu, select MPD and select UDA converter. The Raspberry Pi analog out sounds horrible, but you might use it for some test work. 
the HDMI out is a good option for use with an AV receiver. If you have connected a DA converter using USB, chances are that Rune Audio already has selected it. All the other options on this page are well documented right below the settings. If in doubt, don't change the setting. If you have changed settings, press save and apply. The next thing to do is to tell Rune Audio where the music is. If you use a USB drive, it will already have found it, but if your music is on a network share, you need to tell Rune Audio the network address. To do this, go to the sources menu and click on add new mount. Source name is only for your reference, so you can use any relevant name like computer in the attic. The file share protocol depends on the computer the share is on. For instance, for Windows and some NASes use SMB SIFs, other NASes might need NSF. Shares on a Mac are currently, June 2015, a bit of a problem. It took me a lot of time to find out that since OS X 10.9, Apple uses a network process called Discoverit but never managed to get it working properly. Reports now say that Apple in 10.10.4 is switching back to MDNS responder they used before 10.9. Since Rune Audio did work with my old Core Duo Mac Mini running OS 10 10.6.8, the problem will be solved autumn 2015 when 10.10.4 is released. Don't be fooled by the SMB SIFS OS 10 shares option, that won't solve the problem. Back to the job at hand. The next thing we have to fill out are the IP address and the name of the share. You also have to inform Rune Audio whether a guest account will be accepted by the computer or NAS. If not, you have to specify a username and a password to log in. Don't go for the advanced options and click Save Mount. If all went well, you will see the share mentioned on the network mounts with a green check mark in front of it. In the left lower corner, you will see circling arrows and the word updating indicating the music is indexed. Depending on the size of your music collection this might take some time. After that you are ready to play music. Selecting music is done under the library tab. Here you choose from several services, some of which like Spotify need a subscription. You can also go to the network shares directly or have a list of all your albums, genres or artists. On any level you can add music to the playback queue so you can add all tracks by one artist, all tracks from one album or just a single track. Replacing the queue by a new selection is also possible. When you use a USB DA converter in combination with a Linux player, you do need a USB Audio Profile 1 or 2 compatible DA converter. You can easily find out whether a converter fits these needs by checking whether a special driver is needed for use with a Mac. If not, there is a good chance it will work with Linux, Linux players as well. I have used the Rune Audio setup using Musical Fidelity V90 DAC, the Meridian Explorer 2, the NuForce Micro DAC 3, the AudioQuest Dragonfly version 1.2 and the Chord Hugo. Since I was interested in the highest audio quality obtainable, I did a listening test on my set 1 using the Chord Hugo. The mids and the highs were open and the staging was fair, but the deep lows were completely lacking and replaced by a booming mid low. It was not bad, but also far from impressive. When playing tracks that are sampled at 24 bit 192 kHz, it frequently gave dropouts. The same was the case when playing DSD files of course, since they use 176.4 kHz PCM based stream for transport. Playing 96 kHz tracks or lower went ok. All in all only good enough for my low end set 3 when I limit myself to 96 kHz sampled files. Further research showed a weak point in all networked Raspberry Pis. 
The network functionality is implemented over a single USB controller. Since that is a USB 2 controller, the theoretical maximum data throughput is 480 megabits per second. In practice, this is limited to about 400. The Raspberry Pi's network adapter is limited to, to even 100 megabit per second, again theoretically. The real world throughput seems to vary, but 60 megabits is often mentioned. 192 kilohertz 24 bits needs a sustained bit rate of 9.2 megabits per second, so that seemed to be ok. But both Ethernet networking and asynchronous USB do not use constant bit streams but bursts of data at a higher bit rate. Networks also cause collisions when other activities take place on the network. Computers do not wait for an empty spot but start sending packets at their own convenience. If there is other conflicting traffic on the network, those packets will get lost and no confirmation is received from the addressed computer. So the sending computer just tries again, every missed attempt bringing down the throughput. Since the Raspberry Pi's network controller works over the USB controller, another chance of not seeing packets coming in is present. That same controller has to handle the bits to the A, to the DA converter as well and can't do two things at the same time which incidentally proves that these controllers are masculine. Anyway, we need a clever plan to get the Raspberry Pi working satisfactory. There are a lot of things concerning streaming music that are not covered in reviews. What's the best way to fill out the metadata? What does the compilation tag do? Should I use a computer as a player or have an integrated player from one of the hi-fi brands. What kind of players are there anyway? What is the difference between DNA and plug and play AV? In the last decade I found out these things and many more by trial and error and wrote down the solutions and explanations in an ebook. If you want to go the trial and error route like I did, feel free to do so. It can be a lot of fun for those who seek adventure and can afford it. But if you don't feel like it, invest a heavy 7 euros in my ebook File Based Audio aka Streaming Audio and learn about streaming music the easy way. You find the link here at the end of this video and on the hbproject.com. Back to Rune Audio. The Raspberry Pi has a 30 pin expansion connector that also has some digital audio connections, SPDIF and I2S. SPDIF straight out of a computer will always produce con considerable jitter and my DA converters do not accept I2S, so that was no option. Q Hi Fi Berry, a Swiss company that manufactures a number of audio boards for the Raspberry Pi. One holds a DA converter and another a DA converter and a 2 times 25 watts class D amp. Since computers and analog audio should be kept as far apart as possible, these were no option. They may be a nice solution, but for 35 and 60 euros they fit another market. The third product, however, the Hi-Fi Berry Digi Plus, might offer the solution I was looking for. It is a Raspberry Pi headboard meaning that the Raspberry Pi will sense the presence of the board so the OS can activate the right driver. It uses the I2S signal from the Raspberry Pi, converts it to SPDIF and clocks it with its own clock oscillator. The version I ordered even had a transformer in the SPDIF part to have galvanic separation from the Raspberry Pi. At 35 euros it costs the same as the Hi-Fi Berry DA converter. Mounting the small board on top of the Raspberry Pi is as simple as screwing four nylon posts on the main board, plugging the Digi Plus in and fixing it with nylon nuts to the post. There's one alteration to Rune Audio that has to be made. Since Rune Audio is designed to be as lean as possible, detection of unused components is disabled. 
Therefore it will not see the DigiPlus board unless a small alteration is made to a configuration file that is stored in the root of the micro SD card. Just take the card out of the Raspberry Pi and into your computer. Open that file with a simple text editor like WordPad on Windows or text editor on the Mac. Find the I2S lines, remove the hashtags in front of it and save the file again. That's it. Full instructions are on the HiFiBerry site. Both RCA and TOSLINK outputs are available. Normally the TOSLINK, the optical output, has the disadvantage of a lower bandwidth and the advantage of galvanic separation, but in this case the output on RCA not only provides more bandwidth, but also offers galvanic separation, so I used it to connect the cord Hugo. Same stereo set, same DA converter, but a totally different sound. Now the low end was very deep, there was no mid-low exaggeration and the stereo image was lovely spacious yet precise. Only sibilance was not controlled so well. A standard benchmark for this is famous blue raincoat coat, the original version by Jennifer Warns. It gave a fat and sharp S's. Since the sound was say 90% there, I checked to see what can be tweaked in Rune Audio. In the settings menu on the Rune OS kernel settings I started to play with sound signature. There were 8 options and after listening to them all I found ACX to be the best setting. It didn't seem to change the good sound except for the sibilance that was better controlled. Then I noticed the print on the short digital interlink I used for 20 years now. RG62AE which is a 92 ohm coax cable terminated with BNC connectors. Never had a problem with it, but the sharp S's do appear when using a wrong digital interlink. So I switched to the professional RG59 video leads that are pure 75 ohms and now 90%, 95% of the sibilance problem was gone. Probably the output transformer is far more cable critical than electronics is. I played music for a day starting with the lovely Marais Marais works by Jordi Saval that I ripped from the double SACD on the Alia Fox label. They were played without a single hiccup. After playing the fantastic SACD Storyteller by Donovan, again ripped to DSF, I played some 192 HD track albums. I was convinced I had solved the problem and then suddenly stuttering began. Why I don't know and it disappeared the same way it came, suddenly and unexplainable. I have played a blue sound node for a week using the same collection of HD track albums without a single hiccup. I even played tracks from Tidal for days with only one hiccup. I know these are tracks at 44.1 kHz but they come over the internet. After that incident I did have one or two hiccups using Rune Audio but never so bad as the first time. It is tempting to say that a 35 euro mini computer can make an audio file streamer. The truth is that I had to spend a hundred euros. 35 for the Raspberry Pi, 35 for the Digi Plus board, a tenner for the power supply, a tenner for the housing and almost a tenner for the micro SD card. Still a steal for a streamer but do realize that you do need a good DA converter too. The new Force Micro Deck 3 will set you back 150 euros and via USB provides you about the same quality as the Sonos Connect. You will save 35 euros for the Digi Plus board. But that Sonos could even be set up by my mother and that's a statement. <laughs> While setting up a Rune Audio on the Raspberry Pi does at least take some technical courage. And if there are problems you're on your own. You need to dig deep into user groups and the like. Take it one step higher, for instance with a Musical Fidelity V90 deck and you come in the territory of Blue Sound and Marantz players. Here the V90 deck will sound almost equal to Blue Sound but you will be limited to 96 kHz. Depending on how critical you and your stereo is, 
you might use SPDIF via the DigiPlus board instead of USB. Since both the Micro DAC 3 and the V90 DAC are limited to 96 kHz, the USB network problem likely will not occur. The same goes for the use of the HDMI output. The HDMI output will only feed audio, but since it bypasses the USB hub, network problems are not likely. If your needs are higher, the DigiPlus board becomes a necessity both for audio quality and the use of, audio of higher sampling rates. So if you are new to streaming audio, already have a DA converter or AV receiver and you are not afraid for some simple computer fiddling, Rune Audio on the Raspberry Pi is a good starting point. And if you are that kind of guy, it can be a lot of fun to get it going. It doesn't offer the stability of the better streamers on the market, but it is absolutely usable. Unless your specific setup doesn't seem to work, then it's time to show that you are really that kind of guy. One other thing, don't write me for problem solving. I don't know enough of Linux to help you out and I will not answer those questions. You can read the full review on the hbproject.com. More reviews are on the way, so subscribe to this channel, follow my Facebook page or my Twitter account if you want to keep posted. You'll find the information in the description below. Questions not about Rune Audio can be posted below on my Facebook page or on the contact page on the hbproject.com. And if you have enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and tell your friends about it. My name is Hans Beekhuis for the HB channel. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video or on the hbproject.com.